Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Southern Sorcery, and we are breaking down Desert Bloom, another precon from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Let's get into it. First off, we're going to talk about some of the new cards that have been added to this precon. I love talking about the new cards because it's new. And we're going to dive into doo -doo -doo -doo, the creatures. First, we're going to talk about Yuma Prop Protector. This is the standard commander that most people would run with this precon. Yuma is five, a red, a green, and a white a Naya colors. And he says... Legendary Creature Human Ranger. This spell costs one less to cast for each land card in your graveyard. Already kind of some foreshadowing about how the theme of the deck works. Whenever Yuma Prop Protector enters the battlefield or attacks, you may sacrifice a land. If you do, draw a card. Whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, create a 4-2 green plant warrior creature token with reach. Means it can block flying. Yeah, this just right off the bat, you can tell with this commander like what some of the theme's going to be. Not only is it going to be somewhat of a landfall trigger type of deck, but it's also going to be like lands in the graveyards matter too. So yeah, moving on, we have another really cool card called Kiri, the Talented Sprout, a little little cactus plant druid. This is one and Naya colors again, red, green, and white. Legendary creature plant druid says other plants and tree folk you control get plus two plus O. Oh. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, return target plant, tree folk, or land card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so if you got a land that you really need to come back in, this is your plant druid to help you do so. Next we have one of my favorite characters that they brought back, Hazon. If you remember Hazon Tamar from Legends, it, it was all about the uh, the sand warrior creatures back then, and they brought it back. This time that See, Hazon is again the Naya colors red, white, green, and Hazon is a legendary creature, human warrior with desert walk, which is cool. This creature can't be blocked as long as the defending player controls a desert, so much like land walk that we've seen in the past, forest walk, swamp walk, island walk, etc. This one is specifically for deserts or desserts. You may play desert lands from your graveyard, which is great because this deck is loaded with deserts and it's just so on theme. Whenever a desert enters the battlefield under your control, this is a nod to the old Tazon Tamar. Create two 1-1 one, one red, green, and white sand warrior creature tokens. Honestly, this is probably the commander I would end up building from this pre-con if I was just going to take it completely apart. But I love this card. It's great. Love the colors, love the theme. Just... 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, moving on, we have a Sand Scout, which is a mono-white card, one in a white, a creature. It's a human scout. Lots of scouts in this deck. When Sand Scout enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, search your library for a desert card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, create a 1-1 one, one red, green, and white Sand Warrior creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn, which is sad, because if you could just abuse that, that would be fantastic. But still a good card, very on theme with like what you're trying to do. Uh, a lot of these cards, this deck out of the box has probably been the most impressive, in my opinion. Just just playable, just without really doing anything to it. Next we have Dune Chanter, which is a big plant druid. That's a mono green card, two colorless and one green. For a creature that is a plant druid, has reach. Lands you control and land cards you own that aren't on the battlefield are deserts in addition to their other types. That is huge because, again, there's so many cards in this, this deck that are very contingent upon the lands that you're interacting with to be deserts or desserts. Lands you control have tap, add one man of any color, which is nice, and then tap to mill two cards. You gain one life for each land card milled this way. So again, getting lands into the graveyard, that is what we're looking for. Next, we have Angel of Endemity. Uh, this is an angel warrior that is five and one white. It has flying and lifelink. When Angel of Endemity enters the battlefield, return target permanent card with mana value four or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it also has Encore for six and two white, so it can make its return from the graveyard. Another good card, just you know, a little bit off theme, I think. I mean, other than like, you're know, just getting stuff back out of the graveyard. But again, just cool to see more angels getting, you know, made because angel decks are really kind of taking a lot of emphasis here lately. And next we have probably my favorite card from this entire box, maybe aside from Hazon, but uh, Rumbleweed. Rumbleweed is 10 and a green for a mono green card. It's a plant elemental, uh, but this will cost one less to cast for each land card in your graveyard. So essentially, you could potentially play this for one green. Uh, it has Vigilance, Reach, and Trample, and then when Rumbleweed enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain Trample until the end of the turn, because, so it gives you Overrun ability that could win you the game out of the gate, plus it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. So for one green, potentially, you know, you have to have the lands in the graveyard. You get a Vigilance, Reach, Trample, 
that also comes in and overruns all your creatures to give them plus three plus three and trample which is huge i love that card this card is is probably one of my favorite from the entire set not just from the commander decks uh, moving on from creatures we now have new sorceries uh, so the sorceries are first off embrace the unknown it's a red card two in a red exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn you may play those cards and then it also has Retrace, which Retrace says you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to its other mana costs. So essentially, like, a double whammy here. I like it because it's the red card draw. You know, instead of really drawing the cards, you're exiling them, but you still have access to play them. Uh, and then the really cool thing about it is with the Retrace ability, you still have the ability to discard a land, which we want to do. Normally, that's tough, but in this deck, it's fine. You can pitch all the lands you want in the graveyard. Lands in the graveyard is a good thing. Our next sorcery is Cataclysmic Prospecting. Uh, this is an X cost card, so you can pay into it. It has X and two red, so X is just the amount you pay in. And it says Cataclysmic Prospecting deals X damage to each creature for each mana from a desert spent to cast this spell. Create a tap treasure token. So a really cool way to board wipe something that, you know, that you just can't deal with. Maybe someone's just outpaced you and has more tokens. You can wipe them all out. And then on the plus side, you get to get a bunch of tap treasures as well. So pretty cool. I like that card. And then we have Vengeful Regrowth. This is a green sorcery, four and two green. Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Create that many four, two green plant warrior creature tokens with reach. And then this also has flashbacks. So you can play it from your graveyard for six and two green. So you just get to replay it. After that, you do have to exile it. Pretty on theme, right? You've got a lot, bunch of lands in the graveyard. So paying this and bringing them back to create four, two green plant warrior creature tokens in addition to it, it's good. It's just very much, I don't know, the symmetry in this deck is, is, is awesome. Next, we have a requisition raid. This is one white, but it has the new mechanic with the plus ability. You can even see it in the top right corner of the casting cost where it has the plain symbol there and a little plus. It is a sorcery with spree. Choose one or more of the additional costs. You know, I think spree, it's been used before, but this one now has plus one destroy target artifact, plus one destroy target enchantment, plus one put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls. It's a cool mechanic. I like it. It's, it's a little different than before. I like the casting cost, how it has it up there. It's like a reminder that this is going to cost additional mana so you don't get confused that I can one drop this and, and do something. So pretty unique ability. I like it. Next we have Map the Frontier. This is a green sorcery for three and one green. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or desert cards. This is great. This is a ramp card that's going to allow you to search for deserts too. Put them on the battlefield tap and shuffle. Love it. Uh, couldn't be more on theme. Bovine Intervention. This is one of the new instants. I think the only new instant in this deck. But I love it. The Bovine Intervention. This is about an ox. So you get to one and a white. Destroy target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 2-2 white ox creature token. Love it. It's an instant. It's removal. Gets rid of a pesky, pesky artifact or creature. And you get to give them a 2-2 white ox creature as well. So everybody wins. Definitely has shades of you know different cards that you, know, you destroy something. Generous gift. Esque. You know, the Beast Within. All kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so after that, we are going to move into the lands. There are a lot of new lands from this deck because they wanted to introduce more deserts to the uh, the deck because it needs them. Uh, so we have Conduit Pylons first. And so Conduit Pylons is a land. It's a desert. When it enters the battlefield, you surveil one, which is nice because you can look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. If it's land, you get to pitch it. So it's very on theme. Tap to add a colorless, or you can pay one and tap it to add one mana of any color. It's nice because we are paying three colors, so mana is still a little tricky. Even though we do have green on our side, we still want to be able to fix mana as best as possible. The next one we have is Mirage Mesa. The Mirage Mesa enters the battlefield tapped. As it enters, you get to choose a color, and then it just taps for one mana of the chosen color. So uh, if you're missing a color, this is a good one to kind of all three themes. You're able to pick and choose, which is always nice, and it's a desert, so win-win. Next we have the Cactus Preserve. All of our cacti. Cactus Preserve enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add one mana of any type that a land you control can produce, so it doubles up on that. And then you can pay three into it to, until end of turn, Cactus Preserve becomes an XX green plant a creature with reach, where X is the greatest mana value among your commanders. It's still a land, which is nice because your commander is typically pretty big, so you can make this land pretty big. Then we have the Bristling Backwoods. So these are some of the new deserts that have color mana to them and have an ETB trigger. So what happens is this is a desert. When it enters the battlefield, it's tapped. But when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target opponent. So you get to pick somebody, ping them for one. And then once it's untapped, you can tap it for a red or a green. Deserts are getting a little bit more love. They need it. Then we've got a Creosote Heath. Creosote Heath enters the battlefield tapped. Same thing here. It's just going to be tapping for a green and white and to finish it off 
for this deck, excuse me, specifically, they have a red white one, does the exact same thing. When it enters, you get to ping somebody for one, and then you can tap it for a red or a white. Very nice. All right, next up, we've got the existing creatures. So these are the reprints that have been added to our pre-con. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Sun Titan. If you watch Command Zone, you know that Sun Titan is a very popular uh, meme that they always use. But uh, it's a very awesome card. gets a lot of use. Uh, Sun Titan is four and two white. Uh, he is a giant with vigilance. And whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, seems decent, right? You can even go get lands with Sun Titan. So that's really nice. So yeah, that's, that's a great add i think he fits a lot of like different decks so good to see sun titan get another reprint yet again uh, omnath locus of rage is up next the angry jelly bean is what he's been called uh, so omnath is an elemental for three two red and two green with a landfall trigger which is what we want to see so landfall triggers uh, when a land enters the battlefield that means a landfall trigger <clears throat> can occur so anytime these lands enter you're going to get a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token. So you get more angry jelly beans. And then whenever Omnath Locus of Rage or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals 3 damage to any target. So you can throw those angry jelly beans right to your opponent's face. Next up from there we have Scoot Swarm. Probably one of the most popular landfall creatures of all time. Scoot Swarm is 2 and a green for an insect. A landfall trigger says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control 6 or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. So I think you can tell where that's going right if you have a lot of lands one scoop becomes two two becomes four four becomes eight and it just becomes pretty reasonable <laughs> lots of scoots uh, then we have oracle of moldiah another great card for landfall deck uh, oracle of moldiah is an elf shaman three and a green you may play an additional land on each of your turns play with the top card of your library revealed and then obviously you can play lands from the top of your library so that's why that mechanic is nice so if you don't necessarily have that land in your hand you can play it off the top of your deck uh, really cool i like that a lot from there we have rune map excavator uh, another great card this is a naga cleric so like a snake person a tuna green you may play lands from your graveyard. It's great because if someone gets rid of a land you necessarily need, now you have the ability to play those lands from your graveyard. A lot of that going on in this deck too. From there we have World Shaper. World Shaper is three and a green. This is a merfolk shaman. Whenever World Shaper attacks, you may put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, which we have a lot of lands, so we're going to be hopefully hitting lands to do that. When World Shaper dies, put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So what matters there is for these landfall triggers, once this creature dies, it's going to go get all those lands, put them all in play, so you're going to have landfall triggers going off like crazy. From there we have Nesting Dragon, which also has a landfall trigger. Nesting Dragon is a three and two red, and it is a, a dragon, obviously. It has flying with a landfall trigger. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 0-2 red dragon egg creature token with Defender. And Defender just means it can't attack, it can only block. And when this creature dies, you get to make a 2-2 red dragon creature token with flying and pay a red. This creature gets plus one plus zero until in return, which is typically known as, what, fire breathing? And then it is a 5-4. So pretty cool. You can make some 0-2s that can block. Um, there's a lot of different cards that uh, you can take those and kind of use them as fodder. Pretty unique card too. I haven't played with a lot of red landfall creatures like that. Uh, from there we have Turn Timber Sower. This is another elf druid for two and a green. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you create a zero one green plant creature token. And then you can pay green, sacrifice three creatures. So there's some of the fodder I was talking about. Uh, return target land card from your graveyard to your hand. So again, that's a way to retrace some of the lands that you've had in the graveyard. Uh, while also when lands are put in the graveyard, uh, this makes the plant creature tokens that can also be used as blockers or fodder, etc. These are what I like to call as graveyard triggers for lands. So like that's why it matters to lands to hit the graveyard. Um, so yeah, very unique. I like that. Uh, then we have another great card for lands, Titania, Protector of Argoth. Uh, Titania is three and two green, legendary creature, elemental. When Titania, Protector of Argoth, enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So there's a land entering trigger. Whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 5-3 green elemental creature token. So again, land hitting the graveyard. This triggers Titania, which makes 5-3 green elementals. Great. Avengers Endicar, probably either maybe tied for first or second as far as landfalls just being bonkers with Scoot Swarm. Avengers Endicar is another elemental, so a little elemental theme here. Five and two green. This is a, a big elemental. Whenever uh, it enters the battlefield, you get to create a zero one green plant creature token for each land you control. Every land you have out, that means you get zero one green plant creature tokens for them. 
And then the landfall side of it says whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature you control. So if you have those multiple landfall triggers, these green plants go from zero ones to, you know, five sixes really quick. And you can overrun the board with it. So Ventures in a car, great card. Genesis Hydra, uh, it's another X cost card. It's two green and an X. So whenever you cast a spell, reveal the top X cards of your library. So whenever you pay into it, you may put a non land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle the rest into your library. Genesis Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. So you get to do a lot of things with the X that you paid in with this card. The first thing is obviously you get to reveal the top X cards. So you get to take a look at what was on top. And then from that, that uh, group of cards, you get to choose something, a non-land permanent, and essentially cast it for free. You've paid it with the X cost, but pretty neat that especially if your hands kind of dried up, it's a good way to like cast this and then try to find something that's big, an answer. And at the end of the day, if X is a very large number, Genesis Hydra is going to get that many plus one plus one counters on it too, which makes it itself a big creature. So pretty unique card for this type of deck. Then we have a Sa Wayfinder. This is a Seder, one and a green. When Seder Wayf Wayfinder enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. So again, just more on theme with as far as like trying to find lands and then once you found the one land, hopefully you have others to put into the graveyard. And then we have Skullwinder. Skullwinder sounds like it would be uh, from Outlaws of Thunder Junction for sure. This is two and a green for a snake. It has Death Touch, and whenever it enters the battlefield, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Then choose an opponent. That player returns a card from their graveyard to their hand. So you get to maybe make a friend as well. So Skullwinder comes in. It's a 1-3 with Death Touch, which means it's really nice as a blocker because it can kill a lot of things with the ability of Death Touch. Um, so pretty unique card like it. Elvish Rejuvenator. Elvish Rejuvenator is an elf card. It's a druvid. It's a two and a green. Whenever Elvish Rejuvenator enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. We put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So instead of putting them in the graveyard, this is going to be on the bottom, but Elvish Rejuvenator should help you find a land since we're going to have play so many of them. Uh, from there, we have Spring Bloom Druid. Very popular card in a lot of landfall decks. Uh, two and a green. This is another elf druid. So a lot of elf druids, a lot of elementals in this deck. Uh, whenever he enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a land, which is good because we do want to have lands at the graveyard. If you do, search your library for up to two basic land cards, so it's a trade, one for two. Uh, put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So what's really cool about this card, since we have so many unique cards in this deck that care about landfall and lands going to the graveyard, is this card can essentially come in and do both at the same time. So it's very nice to hit these triggers with, with one singular card, plus only cost three. Uh, from there we have Eccentric Farmer. Eccentric Farmer is two and a green for a human peasant. Uh, whenever Eccentric Farmer enters the battlefield, mill three cards, then you may return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. So again, it's just going to be more of like putting lands in the graveyard, hopefully, and then obviously getting a land into your hand. And from there we have Angel of the Ruins. This is another angel from in the deck. It is five and two white with flying. Whenever Angel of the Ruins enters the battlefield, exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. Plus it also has plane cycling. So if you draw it and you need lands, you can pay that two generic there. Discard, discard, search your library for a planes card, reveal it, put it to your hand, then shuffle. So then you're able to play that planes if you're absolutely needing it. A little bit of land fixing plus removal if you absolutely need it with that card. Then we have Scare Tiller, which is a Scarecrow. Scare Tiller says it's four generic uh, colorless mana for a Scarecrow that says whenever it becomes tapped, you get to choose one. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tap, so you get to put an additional land. Return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap, so you can go get something. So pretty on theme with what we're trying to do here. And then last for the creatures that are reprinted, we have Nantuko Cultivator, which can be a game-winning card. Uh, this is three and a green for an insect druid. Whenever Nantuko Cultivator enters the battlefield, you may discard any number of land cards. Cards, put that many plus one plus one counters on a Duku Cultivator and draw that many cards. If we have a big time death trigger and you have just a handful of lands, you can pitch them all. And then you're also going to get plus one plus one counters, draw cards, and then hopefully get a lot of triggers like with Haze on Tamar, a lot of deserts, you know, anything like that. So it's pretty unique in that sense. Like I said, it could probably, if not win the game, make some of your stuff really big or generate a bunch of tokens all at the same time. So a really fun card. Our next creature is one of the better ones that we have in the deck too. We have Ancient Green Warden. Now, this is the most expensive card that was reprinted i think it's around 13 dollars but here's why green warden is four and two green for an elemental that says reach 
you may play lands from your graveyard, and then if a land, and this is the big part, if a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Massive, because essentially we're going to have double triggers now with, with Ancient Green Warden out, which is huge. And then from there, we have our last creature that we want to talk about, which is Perennial Behemoth. Primal Behemoth is a colorless artifact creature. It's a beast for 5 generic mana for 2-7, so it's got a big booty. You may play land cards from your graveyard, and then it also has Unearth, which is 2 green. Unearth says, return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step, or if it would leave the battlefield, Unearth only as a sorcery. So you can do that on your turn. Uh, the cool thing about Unearth, and this card specifically, is like if you had a ton of ways to abuse the ability to play lands from your graveyard, Unearth it for 2, and go crazy with it, because you're going to lose it, but you have that ability to like basically go back and, and do that thing once again with getting lands out of the graveyard onto the battlefield. But those are our creatures. Moving on from there, we have our sorceries. Uh, our sorceries that got the reprint and added are Descend Upon the Sinful. This is the only board wipe that comes in the deck. This is four and two white. And this is a, a unique uh, board wipe because instead of destroying everything, it exiles. Exile our creatures and then Delirium. Create a four-four white angel creature token with flying if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. So unique. You probably will have that just with how much you know stuff you're putting in the graveyard through mill and through those different mechanics. So you can exile our creatures and then hopefully you'd be the only person with a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying on the battlefield, which gives you a step in the right direction for hopefully being able to be the aggressor, which this deck definitely wants to be aggressive. We have Hour of Promise, which is a great card. It is four and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two land cards. So there's no restriction on basic there. You can go get any lands. Those can be deserts, which is probably what you want. Put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And then if you control three or more deserts, create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens, which is really cool. So not only is it a ramp card, it also is going to be hopefully generate two creatures for you as well. Then we have Savine's Reclamation. This is two and a white for a sorcery that says return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield this can be a land if this spell was cast from a graveyard you may copy this spell and may choose a new target for the copy it says that because it has flashback so for flashback you pay a little more you pay four and a white so you get to cast this card again from your graveyard for its splash flashback cost but then you exile it after that so a pretty cool card to get some lands back for cheap or you can you know get something that someone maybe has destroyed or sent to the graveyard there we have escape to the wilds which is a fun card three a red and a green you get to exile the top five cards of your library you may play cards exile this way until the end of the turn so again that's red's way of saying hey you get to play a, few, a couple more cards and then you may play an additional land this turn which is nice because if you've got landfall triggers that's just going to be another trigger that can pile on top of what you're already doing moving on from there we have decimate decimate is two a red and a green decimate says destroy target artifact target creature target enchantment and target land so as far as removal goes you're going to get one two three four five pieces of removal uh, the really cool thing about this is you can choose your own land because what that's going to do is kind of create a land going into a graveyard trigger for a lot of the different cards we have for that. And it can get rid of a pesky artifact, creature, enchantment that could be affecting your deck. And then Explore, I think a slept on card. It, it does see a lot of play, but it, it it's just worth its weight in gold a lot of times. Uh, for one in a green, you may play an additional land this turn, and you get to draw a card. Early game, Explore is just you know, chef's kiss, you always want to see that, so just a great card. Winding Way, this is another sorcery for one and a green. You choose creature or land, reveal the top four cards of your library, put all the cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. So another way of basically filling your graveyard and hand full of lands. And then we have Thrilling Discovery. Thrilling Discovery is a sorcery for red and white. You gain two life, then you may discard two cards. If you do, draw three cards. The method there would be like, hey, let's pitch two lands, let's go ahead and draw three cards. So just a really good utility card. And then then our last sorcery is Wreck and Rebuild. One red and a green. Choose one. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Or you can mill five cards. Then you may put a land card from your graveyard into the battlefield tap. And then if you want to play this again, you have flashback. Instead of it costing one a red and a green, it costs three a red and a green. And then it exiles after that. Very cool. And then moving on from sorceries, we're going to talk about our instances. Our instant reprints this time around, we have Return of the Wild Speaker. This is a green instant that says for four and a green, you choose one. It has two different choices. You can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, which, you know, most of these cards are going to be elf druids, elementals, etc. And then non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. So if you've already got a ton of those tokens made and you're trying to overrun the board and, and do as much damage as you can, that would be the choice you want to make. Then we have a Valorous Stance. Valorous Stance is one and a white. It says choose one target creature gains indestructible until the end of turn, so it can't be destroyed. Or you can destroy a creature with toughness four or greater. So it kind of has, you know, the both sides of a coin. You can try to protect something, or if you don't want to do that, 
you can try to take something out. Then we have Unholy Heat, which is uh, one red for an instant that says, Unholy Heat deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker, or Delirium, it deals six damage instead if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. So really cool card since we're putting so much stuff in our graveyard, we can, you know, pretty much bank on us having that Delirium trigger. And so for one red, you're able to deal six damage to something and really kind of either spot remove or really cripple a Planeswalker, especially if it's already got a ton of uh, counters on it. Moving on from there, we have Electric Revelation. Electric Revelation. Two and a red as an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card, hope it's a land. You can draw two cards and then it has flashback. So instead of two and a red, you pay three and a red to do the exact same thing and then exile it. From there, we have Haro. Uh, we have two and a green for this instant as an additional cost to cast this spell, sack a land. But then you get to search your library for up to two basic land cards put them on the battlefield and shuffle so again a double whammy you're getting rid of a land there's a land in the graveyard trigger and then you're going to get two lands put them on the battlefield tapped that's two more landfall triggers so just just a great card and then of course one of the more common pieces of removal that we've seen path to exile for one white you can exile target creature uh, however it's controller may search the library for a basic land card put that card on the battlefield tap then shuffle all right moving from instance we have our enchantments enchantments that we have are marshall's anthem pretty unique card this is for two and two white White. It's an enchantment with multi kicker. So essentially, you pay that first cost, and then as many times as you can pay this one in a white cost. If you can pay it three times, that would count as three. So, what it does is creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So, it's an anthem. It gives everything up generic plus one, plus one. And then, when it enters the battlefield, return up to X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the number of times Marshall's anthem was kicked. So, anytime you get to kick it, you also get to return that many target creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, a unique card in the aspect that it has a lot of different uh, abilities other than just being an anthem for your creatures then we have the only saga in the deck we have the mending of dominaria this is for three and two green uh, the first two phases or the lures for this saga are mill two cards then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand so hopefully you're filling your graveyard for the lands and getting creatures back that you need uh, and then on the final step which is really fun you get to return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield then shuffle your graveyard into your library hopefully when you get to do this you have a scoot swarm present and you have six lands so you can get all all those scoots and then just win the game uh, crawling sensation so at the beginning of your upkeep you may mill two card whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere for the first time each turn create a one one green insect creature token so as you're milling these cards you're, you know any of the cards that we've just listed you are putting those lands in the graveyard you're going to get a one one green insect creature so you get a payoff for putting lands in the graveyard and then bitter reunion kind of a sneaky card in the deck uh, this is an enchantment for one and a red uh, when it enters the battlefield you may discard a card so another way to get rid of a land if you do get to draw two cards so a little payoff there and then one you can sacrifice it and creatures you control gain haste until end of turn that matters because you're making so many tokens so let's say you made 80 tokens this turn but you have to pass the turn you know by the time it gets back to you there's probably going to be a board wipe or something to happen to really kind of like neuter that issue uh, but if they give them haste eh, well then maybe you could just win the game outright nice that's all of our enchantments moving on from there we have artifacts don't have a ton of artifacts here i don't need a ton of mana rocks because this is a lands deck so we have a lot of lands uh, we have chromatic lantern which is a really cool card because a lot of our deserts just tap for colorless so this gets around it with Chromatic Lantern. You pay three, it's an artifact, and it says lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color, which is really nice because it makes those deserts essentially have the ability to tap for color mana in a three color deck. And then that itself is a mana rock you can tap the lantern for, one mana of any color. So foot boots, a little protection for some of our creatures. This is two. A quick creature has a hexproof and haste. You can equip it for one. A very common piece of uh, protection, and haste is always a good thing. Soul ring, most common mana rock in the game. Pay one, tap it to add two. A perpetual timepiece is a, a pretty unique artifact for this deck. Uh, you can tap it to put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, or you can pay two to exile perpetual timepiece, shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library. So if the mill has gotten out of control or someone has board wiped you into oblivion, this card will at least allow you to then take your graveyard and shovel into your library and hopefully get you a good nice restart. Then we have Arcane Signet, which is another mana rock for two. Uh, you can tap it to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. And then the last piece that we want to talk about is the existing lands. It's again a lot of deserts. Uh, first we have Scavenger Grounds. Scavenger Grounds is a desert and it says you can tap it to add one colorless or you can pay two and tap it to sacrifice a desert to exile all cards from all graveyards. So a really cool utility land where you can just absolutely annihilate uh, graveyard recursion salt decks but just be careful because it 
can take care of your own stuff, which we're trying to do here, so this probably wouldn't be something you want to use unless you absolutely had to. Sheltered Thicket. This is a, uh, a land that uh, counts as a mountain and forest. It does enter the battlefield tap. It has cycling for two generic, so you can pitch it for two, which is nice. So anytime you cycle a card, puts it in the graveyard, so that counts as a land entering the graveyard. Uh, then eventually when it comes untapped, you can tap it for a red-green. Uh, the same thing for Scattered Groves. It's a Forest Plains. Uh, does the exact same thing. Has the cycling ability. We have Sunscorched Divide, which is a filter land. You pay one generic into it to tap to add a red and white. We have Terramorphic Expanse, which is nice. You can tap to sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. This is cool because it counts essentially as two landfall triggers. So you're going to play this as your land, tap it to sacrifice to go get that land. So now you have two landfall triggers because you've done that. Same thing with Evolving Wilds, same concept. Tap Sacrifice Evolving Wilds, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Then we have Command Tower, which is one of the most common lands we'll see in Commander. Uh, you can tap it to add one mana of any one color to your commander's color identity. Crows and Verge is another one. This one enters the battlefield tapped. This is another style of that land where you can basically get two landfall triggers. You can either tap it to add colorless or you can pay two to tap it, sacrifice it, and instead of getting a basic land, this one does say you can search over for a force card and a planes card. So you're going to go get two lands and put them on the battlefield tap then shuffle. So this could be a three landfall trigger a card. We have Desert of the True, which is a desert. It enters the battlefield tapped. It, it taps for a white or you can cycle it for one and a white. When you cycle it, again, it goes to the graveyard and you get to draw a card. Uh, Desert of the Adomital is the green version of that. Then we have Jungle Shrine. These are some of the original Triomes. They're technically not Triomes, I guess, because they don't have the, the land types other than just being a land. Uh, Inner's Battlefield tapped, and they can tap for one of the three colors of Naya, which is red, green, white. We have Desert of the Fervent, which is the red version of the deserts. We have Dunes of the Dead, which is a unique card. This one says it's another desert that taps for a colorless mana. And then when Dunes of the Dead is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token, which is nice. We have Shafet Dunes, which is a white desert. Again, you can tap to basically add a colorless, or you can tap to pay a life to add a white. And then the unique thing about it is you can pay two and two white tap it, sacrifice a desert, any desert will do. Creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn, activate only as a sorcery. So a nice little added bonus since we have so many tokens to basically add on to their power and toughness. Uh, we have Heyshap Oasis, which is the green version. This has the ability of one and two green to tap and sacrifice a desert. And then a singular target creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn versus all creatures getting plus one plus one. And then lastly we have Ramanap. Ramanap Ruins. Gosh, we'll get there. Ramanap Ruins. Habla. <laughs> tap to add a colorless uh, and then it has the ability where you can pay a life to add a red and then the special ability where two and two red you can tap sacrifice a desert any desert again and it will deal two damage to each opponent so a little bit of burn for everybody's pleasure and then it runs six planes four mountains and seven forests for its basic lands for a total of 40 lands all right so shane what what do i do with this deck like what are the stats behind it how can i utilize all these cards we just talked about like what's what's the theme here so the beauty of this deck is its simplicity this deck is trying to do a couple different things and it does them very well out of the box uh, one of those things is obviously putting lands into a graveyard another one is just putting land into play so it's just lands here lands there lands everywhere simplistically baseline approach is to get your uh, your triggers out so the creatures that that can feast off of lands going into the graveyard the landfall trigger creatures making sure they're out making sure they're protected and then just doing the thing putting lands in the graveyard putting lands into play and just feasting on those mechanics and those enter the battlefield type things happening it's it just gets crazy fast and furious so more technically same thing. That's the great thing about it. Like I said, this deck is so simplistic. This deck's going to come at you, and it doesn't care if it's putting lands into play or into the graveyard. It's going to do its thing. And so some of the statistics in this deck, this is something that we've done recently in some of our newer videos that people like. We've got 40 lands. So a very good bit of lands in a landfall deck. 38 to 40 is right on the sweet spot. How many graveyard trigger type creatures and or things as it come with it comes with nine so there's nine cards that can really benefit from lands entering the graveyard well what about land sack outlets there's five of those those are the things that specifically say put a land in the graveyard or sacrifice a land things of that nature now there's a ton more because you have ways to mill cards or look at the top five cards put one in your hand the rest in the graveyard those can be land in the graveyard type events but and those aren't guarantees land sacks 
you know, those outlets are guarantees because it's going to happen. And then how many landfall type things do we have? We've got five as well out of the gate. So we've got five different things that want to see lands enter the battlefield. So based upon those statistics, what I did is I said, all right, for our ads and removals, I want to focus more on that type of statistic. And so without further ado, let's get into the most exciting part. Let's get into our ads and removals. So first up, we have the creatures. So what I've chosen to do in this breakdown is I'm going to tell you what I'm adding and what I'm removing. So first off, I've got Azusa, Lost But Seeking. If you've ever played a landfall deck, you know that she is just an absolute MVP. She is two and a green, a legendary creature, human monk. You may play two additional lands on each of your turns. What's better than playing one land? Let's play three lands. Landfall trigger, landfall trigger, landfall trigger. So when you really think about that, the Scoot Swarm just, it just gets out of hand very quick with her because she's just, you know, she's an MVP. What can I say? And so for, for her, I specifically removed the Elvish Rejuvenator. This card, you know, Elvish Rejuvenator does its thing, but Azusa Lost But Seeking really does its thing. Uh, next up after that, we've got Aftermath Analyst. This is from the, the most recent set, Murder of Karlov Manor. This is an Elf Detective for one and a green. Aftermath Analyst says when it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. So there we go, there's our mill. Uh, then you can pay three and a green to sacrifice it, and then return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. So again, the landfall triggers there. The land into the graveyard, possibility with milling three cards is there just huge payouts and so for that i remove the skull winder the snake with death touch next up we've got a really fun card for landfall decks very popular lotus cobra uh, lotus cobra is one in a green for a landfall trigger it says when a land enters the battlefield in your control you may add one mana of any color to your mana pool just a great payoff because as lands enter you're getting mana immediately so you can fill your pull up with mana as you're cheating in more lands with some of your additional land type cards so just way too good of a card not to have in the deck again and just just the payoff for me is just it's just too good and for that we remove the scare tiller the scarecrow moving on there we have escape shift so we've got our creatures now we're going into our sorceries escape shift is one of the more expensive cards i decided to add just too good not to and i'll tell you why it's two and a green it's a sorcery you get to sacrifice any number of lands and then go search your library for up to that many land cards put them on the battlefield tap then shuffle your library so as far as payoffs go there's no greater payoff than playing this card because you've got equal amount of enter the graveyard type abilities versus landfall abilities just for paying four mana so you're going to sacrifice 10 lands you're going to get 10 lands so you're going to get 10 triggers there 10 triggers there just a great card when I, I try to stay away from a lot of expensive cards but this one is just too good to miss it, it hovers around 15 dollars which isn't astronomical but it is when you're trying to make a budget build like obviously that's a pretty hefty price but it's a hard one to pass up from there we have a life from the loam Life from the Loam is a great card when you're trying to put lands in the graveyard. Uh, one in a green for a sorcery. Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. And then the ability that we like here is Dredge 3. So Dredge says if you would draw a card and said you may put exactly three cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. So that's where we're hoping to hit lands. If you do, return this card from your graveyard in your hand. Otherwise, draw a card. Uh, so a lot of cool like utility here with Life from the Loam, specifically on the graveyard side because then you're trying to you know get lands back you can put lands in it, it's just very it fits, fits the theme of the deck very well it's a sorcery that i added and i removed a uh, savine's reclamation for it because savine's uh, you're getting stuff back but life alone it, it's just a continual type thing that really sees a lot of benefit and then our next sorcery is going to be nahiri's lithoforming uh, this is a really cool red card uh, with another x cost it's x red red sacrifice x lands for each land sacrifices way draw a card you may play x additional lands this turn lands you control enter the battle feel tap this turn so it's kind of the, the the poor man's version of scape shift right because you're going to sacrifice x lands that you have and then potentially you know the payoff's not as good because you could potentially miss because you're drawing cards you're not going to outright get lands but again the payoff should be pretty hefty because we have 40 lands in the deck so more than a third of the deck is lands. so here here's another card that can really benefit both types of triggers from there we've got crop rotation we're getting into our instance now. Crop Rotation is one green for an instant that says when you play Crop Rotation, sack a land. So right there you go. The cool thing about it is you can tap a forest and then you can choose that tap forest to go ahead and get it so you can float the green mana from the, the forest that you tapped. And then search your library for a land card so there's no restriction on what type. It can be anything. So we're going to go get a desert more than likely to get even more benefit and then put that card into play. Show your library. 
but just again for one green a double payoff type card that's just really going to get a lot of utilization it's going to be a triple payoff card too because you're going to get a desert as well with it uh, and then for crop rotation we got rid of electric revelation next we have realms uncharted a very cool card it's a green instant for two and a green it says search your library for four land cards with different names and reveal them an opponent chooses two of those cards put the chosen cards in your graveyard and the rest into your hands so it's like a factor fiction almost with with lands um, with different names which we have a ton of different lands in this deck with different names especially deserts and so you're going to get hopefully two deserts in the graveyard two in your hand we've got a mechanic out that can make it let us play more, multiple lands so we've got maybe two deserts coming into play so we're talking about triple payoffs again because we've got stuff in the graveyard landfalls and desert landfalls so again a really good card just just to add and for that we removed the sin upon the sinful our only board wipe the reason i removed the board wipe is because when playing a deck that really focuses on the tokens i just i don't see the payoff of having it in your back pocket if if we're gonna throw one in there maybe like a, a blasphemous act something along those lines i mean you could play like a farewell since we're in white so you can kind of pick and choose different things but board wipes and tokens usually don't get along i mean if someone's outpacing you i can see the need for it but in this instance i feel like getting the payoffs for lands going to the different areas that we need them to is a better route uh, from there we have uh, one of my favorite artifacts now in the artifacts we have zurin orb zurin orb is a fun card because it's zero we get to play for free and the payoff here is just you know you can sack a land you gain two life and so we've got tons of land sacking things we want to see him hit the graveyard plus we're gaining life so if we're getting hit a lot being targeted this is a way to recoup some of that lost life and to get lands into the graveyard and we all know we have plenty of creatures that can play lands from the graveyard plenty of abilities to do it so at the end of the day sacking lands is not the bad thing here uh, zoran orb great add i remove the uh, perpetual time piece for it just because perpetual time piece i think the payoff's not as big as zoran orb uh, our next artifact is the most expensive add again this is where i, I splurged on, on on escape shift and then amulet of vigor is the other one i splurged on uh, this is a one drop the most powerful one drop that you could have in this deck i think the reason being is because it says whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped and under your control untap it most of your lands the deserts all like to come in tapped and then a lot of the cards that say like you know when like what we're talking about now here's lithoforming those lands all come in the battlefield tap so yes they would but if amulet of vigor was out it would also untap those lands so just a massive way to like really swing the downside of all those abilities into like no no downside only upside a great card this card hovers around 20 ish 21 dollars again that's most of our budget right there but we've got a lot of other cards that were really under budget so we were able to splurge on a couple big things and just impossible not to add this card uh, it, it's great it, it's worth its weight in gold as a matter of fact uh, moving into enchantments we wanted to see a couple more landfall things so we added feldar retreat uh, this is an enchantment with landfall that says when a land enters the battlefield under your control you get to choose one you can either create a 2-2 white cat beast so big cat or you can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until they'll turn. This card's just good because early game with landfall, you're making your token army. Late game landfall, you are making that army that you've built huge with vigilance. So now you don't have to worry about swinging and not having blockers because now they have vigilance and they're bigger. So just just too good of a card not to add. What we took out for that was the uh, the crawling sensation of the enchantment that makes the zero or the one one bugs. I think the payoff for Fell Tree is just way more. Uh, even though you can do the other one on each turn, this one's just going to make up for it on your own turn because you're going to be able to play more lands and abuse that a second ability later in the game to hopefully overrun your opponents. Our next enchantment is Tectonic Reformation. It's one in a red, and it says each land in your hand has Cycling Red. You pay one mountain for it, and it and the card itself also has Cycling, so if you don't need it late game, you can always pitch it to draw a card. But essentially, now every land has the ability to be pitched into the graveyard for you to draw a card. So now if you have something that you really want to abuse, for putting lands in the graveyard this gives all of your lands that ability just a great card super cheap what we did is we removed the bitter reunion the one that gives haste that was like a hard cut for me i actually like that card it's sneaky good a token deck to give everything haste like that but i think tectonic reformation can really abuse the deck more so than just having the haste at the end to win the game hopefully you've made enough tokens to where you don't have to have that one big token creation turn and then have to wait hopefully you'll be able to stack them and then it doesn't matter for haste but uh tectonic reformation again a very cheap card and then having cycles just you know fantastic and then we have a specific land i wanted to add another desert this is uh, the arid archway uh, this is actually from the new set for whatever reason they just didn't add it uh, but arid archway enters the battlefield tapped and when it enters the battlefield return a land you control to its owner's hand so you 
can bounce the land back to your hand. If another desert was to turn this way, Surveil won. So the cool thing about Surveilling is you get to look at the top card of your library and you put it into your graveyard. So it's a way to bounce a land, have a desert, so you got another landfall. If you don't have a land in hand, this is a way to get a land back in and play it. So if you have a card that says you may play two lands with nothing in your hand, you can play this one to bring one back to play it again. So a lot of cool mechanics, I like it. Plus it's a desert, very on theme. And then, even though Interrail's Battlefield tapped, it taps for two. So you can tap it for two colorless. So it's a pretty unique way in making up for the fact that it comes in tap. What we're taking out for that is uh, just a basic forest. There was seven forests, so we took one of those out to replace it since I'm running six forests instead. A couple of other additions I want to talk about are the lands from New Capenna. Uh, there was Cabaretti Courtyard, Broker's Hideout, Riv uh, Riveteers Overlook, those type of lands. What they do is they say, you know, when they enter the battlefield, you immediately sacrifice them to go get a basic land. There's three lands to choose from on most of those cards. What I would do is I put three of them in there, the three that I mentioned, and I remove Corrosion and Verge, Shelter Thicket, Scattered Groves. Those are color lands, you know, that they tap for specific colors, but these go get them even though they come into play tap. They're basics, but you get double the, the land trigger with these. So you get, you know, the landfall trigger for when it, as soon as they enter, they sack, you gain a life, you go get another land. So boom, boom. I thought for as cheap as those are, that's such a good value add and really sets off the landfall side of the deck. So those are my ads and, and my dismissals. Tell me what you think about this deck. I, I think, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, out of the box, this deck is just super super mean and simplistic you know not in a bad way in, in just a good way of knowing you know the lanes that you want to take with the desert theme lands going into the graveyard lands hitting the battlefield i'm excited to play this deck when it comes out to get my hands on it and hopefully maybe even like build a, a hazon uh, shaper of the sand version of it as well uh, but yeah check out some other stuff we're doing we've we're, this is you know a series we've done with all of these pre-cons so go check out some of the other videos that daniel did check out our patreon we just redid everything we've got different tiers for box breaks uh, streaming online with us through twitch through our new discord which is getting ready to get a new revamp as well we've got a lot going on a lot of in-house work so again always appreciate you thanks for watching let us know what you think about these decks and we'll see you on the other side bye